that's a big thing of what I want, uh, uh, not just Odyssey of Fire, but just Fancore Entertainment, the company, like as a whole, is just I want people to connect with their their inner child or just their inner, you know, happiness of enjoying a story, you know, enjoying just, you know, not having to worry about work or, or whatever hardships are going on, you know, at least for a second, at least for a little. Yeah, bit, absolutely. Know, yeah. And that's you know, also to give people who are struggling to uh, get their voice heard, you know, eventually that's the goal of fan core entertainment is to, you know, get people to, um, have a platform i want fan core entertainment to be like a platform for anyone to 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 publish something whether it's music or a book or a movie or whatever whatever art artistic thing they want to do yeah absolutely and then yeah and the thing about odyssey of fire is that it can translate to journey of the soul um or journey of the spirit fire is the the soul is the fire inside of you yes yeah. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful <laughs> that's, that's what odyssey of fire means it's i know it sounds it sounds more you know whenever you on first glance it sounds like you know odyssey of fire like just a a journey through fire you know like a big you know and, and in a way, that's what it is. But I think more deeply, it can mean, like I said, you know, just journey through your own self. And that's what the spark is definitely about. And like we, Sui and, and even George, like they're the two main characters. Yeah. Can you tell us we... some more about them and what kind of where they come from and, you know, their their kind of goals and what they're all about? Yeah. Uh, I don't want to do too Yeah, no much. spoilers. Yeah, I don't want to spoil anything, but Sui starts out, um, this is at the very beginning of the book. She, like, hates her. She lives in this, like, it, it's a really beautiful, like, village or town, small town. And she lives, like, and it's in this uh, valley that, and that's, like, opening up towards, like, a, a plain of hills it's called right in here she she's lived here all her life she's a farmer she has to work every day which is the bad the only bad part mm -hmm. but she's going through so much just having to be stuck in this place like she's in her head a lot wishing she could and she watches movies and reads books she's like one of the few educated people in the village and she just wants to leave her village and she deals with her parents like her parents love her and they're very loving towards her like they provide for her and all that but they she, they are also very prejudiced and 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 racist in a sense because they're because of the way that they've been uh brought up uh so they they actually didn't they lost their parents when they were very young both of them did so sui you know, it's it's a lot for them to go for her to go through, and she's having to. She wants to leave, but she she feels obligated to her family because of her um their their love for her, mm -hmm. even though they have problems and imperfections. She still loves them, and she, she has her sister Molly Sue, who's another really important character. And she doesn't want to leave her behind either. And Molly Sue has goals to she wants to join Luke's Invicta, and become a soldier. And the thing with George is, um, George, he's, he's like, he's a mysterious guy. I don't want to go too much into his backstory because some of it is spoilery. Um, it comes, <laughs> comes around later. Hey, we're here to get the spoilers, all right? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't give too any spoilers for Suey, did I? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go with no. Yes, yeah. No, it, <laughs> it, it. She, her origin story is is one that I think many can relate to, and it's one that we've heard 
before, but it has its own kind of uniqueness and uh, weight to it that fits yeah. perfectly into what we've heard so far about the rest of the story. And, you know, I think a lot of people are really going to relate to those feelings of like, you know, at, at an impressionable age where, you know, you're making the decision, okay, do I leave home for the first time or, you know, do I stay and where do I go from right. here? What do I want to be? Um, those questions translate very well into, well, my parents have provided for me and they have love for me, but this isn't enough for me. And how do I grapple with those feelings? And yeah, it, it it's a relatable story that I think is universal amongst, you know, all young people and anyone who was once young. So, you know, everyone. Yeah. And the thing is, she also struggles with spirituality. She, she is, she was brought up to believe in the Pantheon. Mm -hmm. There's a Pantheon of 12 gods. And she's like, she's, she, I mean, she's not super devout, but she, she does pray like every day um to but she her she has like a, a daily prayer where she um just prays that she can leave mm. um but like every morning when she wakes up and um throughout the book she's she's eventually gonna have to question you know do, do i believe you know i was just taught this or do i really believe it you know or do i believe in something bigger or do I believe in it in my own way? You yeah, know, or does she believe in nothing at all? Or, you know, is right. it yeah. what is her belief? And I think that's an important step for a lot of kids who could have been brought up on organized religion, or even weren't brought up with organized religion, to grapple with your own individuality and your own spiritual beliefs, and whether or not you even have them, and you know, knowing that it's okay, whatever conclusion you come to. Right. As, as it is so personal. Yeah, to, exactly. You know, or should be. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's a, the big thing for her. And there's, gonna, there's like a, I guess I don't want to get into spoilers, but there's like a big scene towards the end where she like it all comes full circle and everything uh everything is cyclical we look at it's very important for me personally to have that that music or you know however the music will be will be uh portrayed or or, or played because if you notice throughout throughout history and, and we can go back we can go back as as far as almost six thousand years, when it comes to music, they they unearthed mm -hmm. they unearthed these uh, Sumerian tablets, uh, or maybe they were Akkadian, but they unearthed these tablets, and there is musical notations in these tablets. So <clears throat> the notes are there, and and then if you look at how music has developed throughout, you know, the ages and stuff, you could you know you could kind of put an idea to or, or try to recreate what this music could have sounded like you know six thousand years ago but then you know you go forward in time you know now yeah. six thousand years and and i notice you notice that every time every time that the the way that the music is played in a society if you know if if the the notes don't change but the way that these notes are are played once that changes in a society the society as a whole also changes you know and and the most mm. recent we saw it in the 60s you know with the advent of of advent of heavy metal or you know hard rock and stuff and then all of a sudden there was that political social movement the the civil rights movement and then it goes on to the 80s or the early 90s and how like um uh, the grunge era and yes the grunge yeah. era and stuff and then with rodney king mm -hmm. and stuff and then we have yeah. nowadays you know, and every single time that you see that a new style or some new way of, of of annotating music comes through 
there is social and political change on the horizon. You know? Well, I've always so I've always said that music is a, a universal language and it's something that like we everyone understands and can connect with on a very deep emotional personal level and it's it's a way to communicate when like words fail and it's it's so much a, a language of heart and a language of you know belief and it's it's so deeply personal and emotional that you know everybody can draw something from it and there isn't really anything else out there that kind of connects us and in the same way that music does on that kind of level right yeah the music is a big thing and it's in a lot of my work is going to be um that's you know my odyssey odyssey of fire i've i've written some pieces or at least i i came i before i learned how to write music which i'm still learning i i'm not a very good at it yet but um i have like recorded myself singing music that pops into my head you know different themes for like different um situations i even have like some like a main theme for odyssey of fire mm -hmm. and like a i've got one for suey and george and um honestly like combining those three um and eventually i want to uh my friend actually wrote something for molly sue which I want to combine into it, but together it's like a medley and I want to use that for like the opening theme for the TV series. Okay. You know, like, you know, you have the TV series, you got to have that intro to get people. Hyped. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, that's why I hate the, on Netflix says skip intro. No, I don't want to skip the intro. <laughs> no, I got to listen to this jam. <laughs> get me hyped for yeah. this show i'm about it to gets, watch it really, you know <laughs> it sets the it sets the tone oh yeah and so, yeah you know one of my favorites was uh yeah. <laughs> uh one of my favorites was uh the the cover the cover that they did with the smiths for how soon is now in in i think it was charmed uh, um, yeah. I am the sun and the air of a shyness that is criminally broken. I am the sun and air of nothing in particular. And, I, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, it, it, and it's so, you know, it, it was an originally, it was a Smith's song, but the way that it was done it for the, for that um, uh, TV series, not that I got into the TV series, but... <laughs> But the the theme itself, like that 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 uh, the the intro theme or uh, soundtrack, was hit me. Hit you know it hit me. So you know. yeah, it, and uh, and yeah. it's something that like you know you'll hear a particular song and it like completely links your brain to something that you've previously experienced. Like there are some songs that are so associated with you know particular moments of television or what or movies or you know whatever it might be like you know risky business and the you know old time rock and roll and you know right. the bohemian rhapsody and spinal tap and you know they're just some <laughs> like <laughs> they're just these these moments that music just like you can't hear a song without thinking about it and it just that's that's so important to have you know some sort of oral kind of I guess connector, yeah. I would say, to you know yeah. draw on and associate with. So I think that's great to you know make music such a prominent aspect because it's only going to bring your audience closer together. Yeah, music. Definitely. Honestly, like if I w wasn't, you know, filmmaking is probably writing and filmmaking is are like my two. Like I think they're equal in and how how much I am passionate about them. Music I am also equally passionate about. I just wish that I knew I knew it more. You know that's why I'm trying to learn. Hey, practice it's, makes perfect. What they tell you is it's true. 
as somebody who has done music for a vast portion of their life, I, you know, it's practice, you know, and anybody can learn yeah. it. Anybody can do it. I truly believe that like there, it's something that any human can connect with and, you know, you just yeah. have to keep working at it. Yeah. Music. Uh, I, I agree 100%. Yeah. I listen to so many different things. Like, honestly, I don't really have, you know, some people have preferences. I don't, I mean, I, I just like ever. I find beauty in everything, you know, and even, even things I'm not like, you know, like I'm not huge on like modern country, but even then I find some beauty in some of the melodies and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I I always tell people that I don't really I don't really dislike any type of music except for, you know, some country, but yeah, yeah that like you said there's a beauty in in every genre and there's, yeah. you know, a story behind every song and I think, you know, it's important to to hear those stories. For example, like I've I've also been involved in in music the music has been the only constant in my life, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, it's always been there. And, you know, the, the, the mental blocks that you put yourselves in, like, oh, well, you know, like, I can't get along with this person because he likes this kind of music and stuff. Like, just, <laughs> like, ridiculous crap that you used to tell yourself it's a kid, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, well, metal has been metal has been what i what i've done mostly i've mostly done uh heavy metal or just metal in all its different incarnations and um and and then you know you have a, a genre of music that's called black metal that's known for its satanic lyrical content and stuff and you know it's mm -hmm. like inherently inherently nothing is good or bad it is the intent with which it's done right? yeah absolutely so you know i could i could I could sing until I'm blue in the face about, uh, you know, Satanism or, or this or that or anything like that. But what is the intent behind it? If the intent is to summon up some evil <laughs> crap, you know, then, yeah, it, it's evil. But if you're just trying to, you know, if you're just trying to inform the masses of what this evil that you perceive, you know, then all of a sudden it, it, it becomes a force for a force for good. I have a I have a song called The Light Bearer that is. Uh, the song the light bearer was written about lucifer and and how lucifer was this angel of beauty and light and how he was the director of the choirs in heaven he spoke with eight voices and he had eight wings and blah blah and all this stuff and then because of his greed or his uh you know uh desires extra the desire for always more right and then and yeah. then became this deformed disfigured um entity so you know it, oh the song's about satan mm -hmm. well yeah but you know what i mean yeah. like, what's the intent behind it that's where where we uh I, I think we get sidetracked a lot and stuff and it's like oh well you know the way that it sounds you know it, it has a growl in it and it's like well i'm just trying to portray a feeling of, of urgency in 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 the vocals that i that, that i'm doing it 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 yeah, has nothing to do with oh, this guy became possessed and he's speaking in tongues or or whatever, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah, I, I love um especially like that kind of uh of metal. Um, I, every I have my moments where I'm like, I just want to, you know, just listen to something hardcore, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to I want to get on the day on a on a great note, you know. So the the invincibleness, yeah. invincibleness. I, I don't know if you get this feeling, but when you wake up and you take in that first breath, it's like I made it. <laughs> like <laughs> we are here. I am invincible. And then the day goes on, and you're like, Nah, I'm not so much invincible, but at least I made it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's interesting to hear you, you know, talk about, you know, metal and that being your your genre cuz I'm on kind of the opposite side of the musical spectrum in the I've been in choir and chorus my, you know, entire childhood and up through college and what's interesting about that is that there's like my choir director, you know, at UCF, she she always made sure that we took a moment to read 
the poems of whatever classical pieces we were singing and understood what it was that we were singing and somehow like we would go around the room and say what we thought they meant or what they meant to us and find that deeper connection to the music and that's when we Mm. finally were able to sing them with purpose and with power and with meaning and could connect to each other and connect with an audience and you know finding that that meaning and deeper understanding that's also a universal concept with music and it's you know something that everybody can emotionally connect to and it's you know it's a powerful thing and like you said like when you get up there and it's it's you know it's it's kind of an otherworldly feeling, you know, there's an energy, there's an yeah. electricity when, when, you know, everything locks into place and, you know, you, you realize that you're, you're a part of something that's bigger than yourself and it's, you know, a me- it's a melody or it's, yeah. you know, it's a feeling, it's an energy, it's a connection that you're having with your, you know, the people that you're singing with, but also the people that are listening. And that's something that's unique, I feel like, to music. Mm. Yeah, with the present situation and how it's, it's, it's becoming harder to get together, <laughs> it's, it's definitely a, a viable you know, visualize a, a viable solution for for the time being. You know, we'll see how this all plays yeah. out. But well, I think it, yeah, that's one know. of the great things about you know entertainment as a medium is that like it 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 doesn't require an in person connection to still have a connection, and I think it mm. it offers a really exciting you know kind of creativity that we didn't have before and a you know problem solving and all this that you know we have to work around but people are still creating people are still entertaining there's still you know this deeper Mm -hmm. connection with people and I feel like you know even though we're all separate there's there's still that human connection that you know everybody wants yeah Right, yeah. I think um, a big part of um, Fancore Entertainment's name. See, the thing is, the Fancore and the Fancore and Fancore Entertainment is actually a reference to you know the the thing and the the concept and Odyssey of Fire that all fantasies and thoughts and dreams become reality um, somewhere in the cosmos, somewhere in the multiverse, you know. That's how things are. That's how all the universes are brought together. And um, but uh, at the same time, aside from that meaning, I also feel like it could ha- it could also mean fan fan as in fans mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. yeah things and core as you know people who are fans of art and and just creativity can it, that's the core of the company is to help them and help each other uh see our see our creativity and our art and you know just be able to present it to the world yeah i mean i haven't ever met a more passionate or you know as a it's a fangirl myself um i haven't met a more passionate or dedicated bunch of people than a fan base you know there's there's a passion there and there's a a drive and a you know a just a loyalty that you don't really get in a lot of places that's just it's it's great it's it's an awesome thing there's a community there's a you know a sense of belonging that I think is just one of the reasons why it's so attractive to be a part of a fan base yeah. Right. 